Hey everyone, hello, welcome back to the booth, Sideshow Con Day 7. This is the second part of the booth tour. The final. The final booth tour. The final booth tour. We are very, very excited to have you all here. Thank you again for joining us all week. Uh, seriously, we can't do this without you. So, you know, Alex. What? For the very last time very at this booth. Very last time. I cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> very last time at this booth. Amy, Wendy, take it away. tour already oh my heart is breaking but that doesn't mean we don't have things to show you here we've got a couple more really fun kind of a this is a miscellaneous we had our dc tour earlier and then you guys got to see that amazing dc art gallery uh tour earlier we've got a couple of fan favorite properties uh we got stuff for movie fans, we got wrestling, so you guys are gonna wanna stick around to sh uh, so you can see what we've got going here. We're gonna jump right in. We've got a trio of incredible Iron Studios pieces. Let's start with this one up here. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Uh, this is a new Velociraptors statue by Iron Studios. This is such a fun and engaging piece. You guys are seeing there is a bit of mixed media element to this because there are soft cast uh, foliage elements here that really add a kind of lushness and a, a different softness because you can see the sculpt of the leaves on the base of this piece, but then you can also see those softer elements it almost appears as though the raptors are physically uh, kind of pushing through the brush here. I really like the detail on the sculpt here, and Amy, the, these raptors, when I was younger, when I saw Jurassic Park for the first time, they scared the bejesus out of me, <laughs> and seeing them Rightfully now, I, so. like, honestly though, they're kind of cute. They are Because they're cute. smaller scale. Yes, so Iron Studios has scaled these fero uh, ferocious beasts down. Uh, these are the cast in polystone. Each uh, Iron Studios piece is limited edition, hand-painted. There is such exceptional attention to all of the kind of wrinkles and scales on these, and they have such expressive eyes, and the way, I mean, it's, it's just such an iconic creature, and the way that it moves on screen, you guys can almost feel that here in this piece. Uh, and then up front, of course, we do have that nice little medallion of the Jurassic Park logo to really kind of complete this. But just for me, it's it's those, those kind of softer leaves that really sell and nail the environment that the raptors are in. Ties everything in, you know, lets you know that you are now in Jurassic Park. And I also want to point out to the eyes. The eyes are particularly where the light hits, particularly shining. Yes, and they've got some nice colors in there. We can see the kind of greens and yellows, very subtle detailing, but those as they catch the light and kind of vary from the scaled textures of the dinosaurs, just add an extra dimension to this piece. I will say they, I feel like as I move around, myself around, the, they follow you, these <laughs> eyes, they follow you. I just, I just now for the first time got around and looked at this guy. He looks like he's smiling at me. Uh, but yes, they do have a kind of eye, like almost a magic eye quality. And that's just the way that these are sculpted. Uh, such fun, expressive little creatures. Now we've got a couple of Back to the Future films represented here. Of course, we've got Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future three. Uh, so let's start up here with uh, the hoverboard. We've got Marty McFly balancing over. I love how precarious this looks with the kind of uh, clear cast water that they've sculpted in here because it does have a sense of motion. And it feels like he is struggling to to get the balance on that, you know, that modernized 2015 style hoverboard. Well, it's 2021, Amy, and I still don't have a hoverboard in my home, but Marty McFly certainly does in this one. And I love the different textures, obviously, the technique put into the sculpt here. I love that he's gliding over water and sort of the off-center trying to catch his balance, you know, as he's learning how to, how to navigate uh, for one of the first times ever. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that he's kind of not angling his eyes aren't, you know, uh, in an upward angle. It's kind of looking down, probably something I would do as well if I was trying to hoverboard over water. Yeah, it really adds to the focus of the character in this scene. And there's some great textures going on on the jacket. Again, these are uh, all sculpted pieces. You can see there's kind of the mat of the sleeves and I can almost feel the like windbreaker style fabric. Uh, and then there is kind of a quilted aspect to the back. It's got patterns on it as well. And they've captured that kind of ribbed knit of the um, kind of the hem of the jacket and the collar. Uh, this is just a really, really fun piece. And it is wild to think about the fact that this movie and these, these films now all take place in the past to <laughs> us. There yes. was a time where we were living in and, and 2015 was the future. Um, and so you guys can see this has the Back to the Future 2 uh, kind of logo on the base and then a more uh, kind of Hill Valley, uh, that kind of center fountain 
surrounding there. Um, and even the, the kind of faux acid wash that they've gotten on the jeans, the, yeah. the way that that is painted with a soft white element really looks like denim. But again, these pieces are entirely sculpted. So then we also have a Back to the Future 3 piece. Uh, we've got uh, Doc and Marty standing in front of the clock. Uh, we've got that really cool kind of uh, steam engine train border around the base, of course, because this is uh, 1885 Hill Valley mm -hmm. that we've got going on there. So you can see the kind of locomotive aspect to it. So that makes it a really fun way to pair with the, uh, the Back to the Future 2 piece, where you've got the differing eras of architecture and aesthetic reflected around the base. And then, of course, we've got two fully sculpted figures looking... Uh, Quite well dashing. dressed, yes. Well dressed in their uh, their western finery. Uh, I love the likenesses and the and the poses here because again, while they are the heroes of our story, these aren't Avengers. These aren't characters leaping off of buildings. It's just a very subtle recreation of this moment and the way that they've captured the folds in the suit jackets, the kind of slightly large uh, clothes that they are wearing. Uh, just a really really fun piece and and the likeness on Doc especially has a nice softness to it that. Uh, that smiling. mischievous smell, uh, sm smell, smile. <laughs> yes, and that kind of uh, that subtle pride that he always has <laughs> when things go right. I mean, he's 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 a very smart man, uh, so most of his schemes work out. Uh, but this is just such a really fun piece. Uh, the clock is non-functional, uh, but uh, you guys can bring this to your collection soon. You'll want to check out side.show slash con Marty Doc uh, <laughs> to RSVP, I believe, to be notified about this piece. I don't think it's yet up for pre-order, but uh, if it if not, it'll be very soon. Just a fun, fun piece to capture uh, almost all of the trilogy of Back to the Future. Now, I want to let you guys know that we are going to be sweeping through our Hot Toys section. There are no new reveals, but we have the return of the Marvel's Spider-Man series. We've also got our uh, Disney Plus streaming series and the Star Wars pieces. Now, Wendy, this is your first time getting to see these Hot Toys pieces. So is there any that you want to take a closer look at as we revisit? Absolutely. The first thing that jumped out at me is the Purple Rain suit. Yes. So I have not seen this before. This was a brand new reveal by Hot Toys. It's not yet up for pre-order. This is from Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and this is his suit based on the Prowler, which is one of, of course, his signature villains, a beautiful metallic purple uh, to the costume with those nice green elements. We've got the kind of spider symbol inlaid in the suit. Um, you guys are seeing his shoe treads in action right there. we got some nice uh, yes. underside there. Um, and this figure will have light up LED eyes uh, to kind of get a glow in that mask. But otherwise, you guys can see he's got those kind of clawed uh, hands that are very in, uh, indicative and evocative of the Prowler uh, costume. And then you've got here an accessory of that kind of green action swipe. Hot Toys is always so fantastic with these pieces. There's bound to be a number of web accessories, swap out hands, uh, but we are just seeing the prototype here with this really fun action pose. Um, and then those pieces do have the dynamic figure stand, so you can get the nice leaping action for your characters. And it has the specialized character stand with the appropriate Purple Rain suit colors. And that's Purple Rain, R-E-I-G-N, uh, which <laughs> is a lot of fun. Not the weather. Not the weather, but uh, nice homage, uh, but a really cool uh, combination of the hero and the villain. I mean, Amy, you know how much I love a dynamic pose, which takes me to the next uh, figure that I want to ask you about, the cyborg suit also, and like web slinging, web swinging sort of an action pose here. Yes, so you guys can see, especially on this piece, one of those uh, different web accessories in action. There's a couple of them featured throughout this display of Spider-Man figures. Um, now, this is based on a suit from the comics that was then translated into the video games. It's a pretty deep cut for Spider-Man fans. But one of the most interesting aspects of this piece is the way that Hot Toys has captured the distress and the wear and tear and the kind of re-sewing together of the suit that Peter Parker has done in this strange version that has a cyborg-style arm. We've also got that unique eye patch uh, feature, um, so you guys can see that. But especially on the portrait and the legs, you guys can see uh, the areas of distress and wear and tear that they've worked so expertly into the fabric elements of the costume. I really love the entire like thing we've got set up here for all the Spider-Man. If we had an hour, I would ask you to take me through every single one of them. Yes, and they're so fantastic. I mean, um, Cyborg Soup Spider-Man is up for pre-order on our website. That is one of the uh, Toy Fair ex uh, exclusives for the summer from Hot Toys, so you guys can pre-order that if you have this entire armory or you're looking to complete your collection. Uh, because video game fans, of course, are completionists. 
Uh, but we have a number of pieces here featured. You can check them out on our website. Um, the Scarlet, uh, Scarlet Spider suit and the Advanced suit are currently sold out. But if this is if you have those pieces in your collection, this is what you could have as well. If you brought home Spider Punk, if you brought home the Anti Ox suit, we've also got Iron Spider from the comics, and then Spider Man 2099 and the Mark uh, IV armor for Peter Parker, and then we also have Miles Morales' 2020 suit. Um, but these were all featured in depth earlier in the week. You guys can check that out, and if you want to walk this booth tour for yourself later today, side dot show slash. VR4 will be available so you can see this booth configuration or you can visit some of our previous days, VR1, VR2, and VR3 to walk through the booth yourself. We've also got full galleries on our social media of these pieces if you want to take a closer look at static photographs. Now, next up, we've got a couple of, uh, we've got the Disney Plus Marvel series. We've got some developments from Marvel Studios. Now, Baron Zemo was another brand new reveal this week, not yet up for pre-order, uh, but this was super exciting to see uh, how Hot Toys nailed that really kind of uh, suave costume of his. We got to see the iconic addition of that purple mask as it appeared in the series. Fans were really waiting to see if this character would, first of all, come back after his appearance in Civil War, but also uh, to really uh, get his own representation in the Hot Toys lineup. Absolutely. I love seeing uh, Baron Zemo in the show, and I love that this Hot Toys here is got, it's showing him with the mask on, mm -hmm. which in the show we saw more of the actor's face, obviously, but this is such a, just a great nod to all the fans out there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, the Falcon and Winter, or Captain America, excuse Captain me, America. and Winter Soldier <laughs> uh, on their respective Falcon and Winter Soldier themed bases. These are both available for pre-order on our website right now, and we did cover them earlier in the week. But I'm just, I just love that uh, that um, Captain America, Sam Wilson. It's, it's just great to see that era of Marvel Comics now jumping to the silver screen. And it's such a handsome suit. I'm loving the wingspan on there. You know, he's got the shield, the wings. There's the dynamic, package. dynamic figure stand Absolutely. for him and also for the red wing drone. You've got articulation in the wings as well and that beautiful, beautiful shield. Oh, wow. That's kind of screaming to me because I'm a, I'm a pig cape girl and now I can be <laughs> a wing girl. Yes. All right. So up next, we've got some Star Wars pieces. Are there any of these characters you want to focus a little bit more on? A lot of people, uh, we've seen these all this week. We've focused on them. Uh, but it's just such an exciting explosion of... Uh, the Mandalorian Season 2 in this world that Hot Toys has captured in six-scale format. Any of these you have any questions on or want to see closer? I am so excited that I'm actually seeing this in person because seeing it, you know, online, just a little bit different. Uh, I got to go straight to my girl, Sokotano, right here. All right. You knew this. Yes, I, I, had, a, I had an <laughs> inkling. Um, just such a beautiful representation of actress Rosario Dawson in the live-action version of Ahsoka. A slightly different design than we've seen her before, uh, but a really, really unique addition to this world. She fits so well in with the landscape of the Mandalorian. We see here she's got an expertly tailored fabric costume. The character does, of course, have the likeness as well as those Togruta markings. Um, and this does have a special rolling eyeballs feature, so you can readjust her vision and, and the focus of her eyes. We can't show it here right now, but that will be included in the final product uh, from Hot Toys, which is a new degree of of kind of interactivity that they've been adding to select figures. So you will be able to really change the direction in which she's looking and, and really get that kind of action pose in there. There's so much detail just looking at this and thinking back to the first time we all saw Ahsoka Tano come to live, you know, via this live action uh, TV series. And I just want to just call out all the little tiny details from the little wrinklings on her on her lekus. Yes. I love that they actually have that, you know, as a part of the hot toys. Such a subtle detail yeah. that kind of really gives more life to her because she is a living alien in the Star Wars galaxy. Um, her her costume is just amazing. I love the the baggier pants. Yes. They've got such a beautiful pattern on them. Sort of like the samurai inspiration, the tabby yes. boots. Yes, and then she's got her uh, dual lightsabers. Hot Toys also includes a motion blade. It's kind of in a V shape, so it looks like if, if you do an action pose, it looks like it's swiping and leaving like the light trail in motion. Oh, fantastic. And then those greaves on her legs and the unique shoes, that really kind of sells that samurai or like ronin, like wandering swordsman look to her. Just a beautiful, beautiful representation of the character. Now, this is available for pre-order on our website right now. And then before we move on from the Star Wars Galaxy, I did want to call attention one more time to the Armorer, who is one of the exclusives for Sideshow Con this week. Uh, also a Toy Fair summer exclusive for Hot Toys. Just a great representation of a character who impacted the Mandalorian so much in subtle ways by reinforcing that 
Mandalore code or the way of Mandalore. She's got a mixed media costume. I love the kind of uh, fabric faux leather boot cover she's got going on and that beautiful faux fur cape. And then her helmet. I think that is one of my absolute favorite Mandalorian helmets that has ever been featured. I love the more Spartan warrior-like yes, look to it. absolutely. Um, just such a stoic character who really grounds the Mando, our, our main character, in his own past. Now that is available for pre-order on our website. You can check that out at side.show slash con armorer if you want to pre-order her. This is the way. This is the way, exactly. All right. So then we're going to go over here. We've got a couple more Marvel Studios pieces we're going to take another look at today. This is your first time seeing these in person again. Um, so we've got, of course, we've got Vision, Scarlet Witch, and then The Vision. So we've got two different versions of Viz, of course, one representing the hex and the, the, the vision that Wanda has created. And then we've got the actual physical Vision whose body has been uh, kind of remade by S.W.O.R.D. Every single one of these pieces are so detailed and I love and I've said this before, the likeness to the actors themselves playing, it's incredible how much, how Hot Toys can capture this. And I am just blown away by the Wanda, the Wanda one, because this is, you know, in the series, the first time we saw her in this iteration of her costume. Yes. And they captured it exactly, especially with the magic coming out of her hand, the headpiece, the intricacy of it. Um, the volume to her hair, yes. it looks fabulous, just as she's, mid-flight you guys see that she does have the dynamic figure stand so you can recreate some of that battle sequence with her and Agatha at the end of the series. Um, just so much fun. There's a great great uh, pattern to the outside of her cape as well and she does have a dark hold book accessory so you can pose her recreating and, oh, and studying in that after credit sequence and then the figure we don't have it on display right now but the figure does have a luminous reflective effect to the eyes so you can under a specialized light depict some of that kind of red of her eyes when she's using her magic. And that's incredible. It makes it a lot more interactive, you know, instead of just displaying your hot toys on a shelf somewhere, you can actually, you know, really show it off the special effects that they put into it. Yes, and especially with the right lighting, you can really get some cool uh, under light uh, going on there. And then, of course, we do have uh, those two vision pieces alongside her. Those are both available for pre-order on our website as well. Um, again, as I mentioned, we've got the kind of hex vision, uh, who is her ideal, like that's the vision she remembers, and then we've got the uh, alternate version. So you can uh, check those out on our website. Our mods will have the short links for both of those pieces up on our uh, the feed you're seeing right now. And then we're going to jump back into Star Wars really quickly with a really cool one-to-one -one life-size recreation of the Mandalorian helmet. We also have it on display uh, alongside a, uh, a Stormtrooper helmet. This is from EFX. And this is such a, a really cool piece because it was based on actual molds from the show. They've also studied the helmet prop uh, extensively to recreate the weathering on the paint job. You guys can see, especially in those kind of corners between metal pieces um, in, in the, the Mando's helmet, uh, it does have that kind of uh, dirt and weathering detail as we've got the Mandalorian constantly traveling through so many desert planets. I mean, there's, there's so many uh, going on there. But yes, this, the EFX team extensively uh, recreated and studied the actual prop used in the series. And this is available for pre-order on our website, as is the Stormtrooper, I believe. So you can check that out at side.show. Uh, uh, side.show slash con Stormtroop is the Stormtrooper helmet. And then we do have a short link for the Mandalorian as well. Um, that will probably be on screen in just a moment. Uh, but these, again, just beautiful recreations. If uh, you're into the life-size props, uh, maybe you have a whole helmet display. Maybe you're, you're a bucket head uh, and you like <laughs> collecting the different helmets of the Star Wars universe. This is definitely, uh, especially the Mando, one of the newer helmets. It's just such a, a cool design in yeah, their collection. I really love the overall aesthetic of the Mandalorian. You know, the color that they decided on his armor. And as we see, it's very, very shiny throughout the series. Yes. And this, uh, you know, really, really captures that. All right, so up next, we're going to take it to the Lord of the Rings. We've got a collection of pieces here, uh, really cool sixth scale figures by Asmus. They've just done a fantastic job of recreating uh, some amazing character moments. And then we do have a Balrog statue here as well. I'm going to start over here with the Balrog. Um, there is so many cool uh, kind of paint applications going on here. You guys can see there's a semi-translucent fire effect kind of on the, the mane of the Balrog, I guess. I don't know 
Balrog anatomy. Um, <laughs> but you guys can see also that fiery whip that is going all the way throughout this piece that really adds a bright pop because the other elements of warmth and redness in this piece are a little bit more subtle. They're kind of in the mantle of the kind of between the scales and the crust of the Balrog's um, exterior surface. You can see that kind of lava style molten red. Just an imposing character, of course. Uh, really great recreation. We've got um, some of the kind of destroyed uh, stonework around him as well as he faces off with whoever else you may have in your collection. Uh, this is a great kind of challenging pose that looks really great both on its own but also faced off with other characters. Now we do have a trio of six scale figures. The new reveal uh, that we've got, the newest one, is the Legolas. Uh, these, are, um, these two are Battle of Helm's Deep figures. Uh, so we've got a lot going on here. So Legolas has a kind of um, Urukai battle ladder uh, part to his base, and uh, there's just some interesting, uh, just a lot of interesting aspects to these pieces that I love. One of the things you guys are seeing is that he has a mixed hair, uh, kind of sculpt and rooted hair depiction. So you guys are seeing to keep that hairline nice and sleek. Uh, this is a prototype you guys are seeing right now. Um, uh, so there may be final changes to the, the product, but you guys are seeing a really, really great representation, of course, of the portrait. And then, as I mentioned, he's got rooted hair elements for the back, so you can get some of those uh, kind of action poses and style it over his shoulders, depending on the poses uh, that you guys uh, choose to have in your collection. And then, of course, he's got those different elements of uh, kind of sculpted chainmail or uh, elven armor all throughout those beautiful kind of uh, adornments on his gauntlets done in a very, very thin gold kind of color there. And then I really like the, the hand we have him displayed with right now holding uh, the arrow. He's got a, a full quiver as well and then a mixed media costume application with a fabric undershirt. We've got the fabric pants and the kind of uh, green tunic and hood. And then alongside him we do have the Aragorn at Helm's Deep and then we've got the Gandalf the Grey uh, six scale figures as well. Now, uh, Aragorn at Helm's Deep was featured on our uh, on last year's Sideshow Con stream. You guys can see, again, he's got a uh, kind of an orc helmet down at the base as well as that kind of uh, faux stonework pillar. Uh, just a really great costume representation. He's got a fabric material that is recreating that chain mail. Uh, and then I really just love the, the stern look on his portrait going on there. And then with Gandalf, you guys get to see he has a full rooted hair application just to really capture that kind of immense uh, beard, the incredibly stoic look on his face. The eyes just look so uh, wise and, and aged. And then we get to see him with the pipe uh, and the fun kind of environment base going on there. I believe that is actually the, the gate with no admittance except on party <laughs> yes. business. Uh, and then the full fabric costume with those immense robes uh, and under kind of under cloaks and all of that just to really recreate uh, this character. So you can check that out at side.show slash con Gandalf. Now we're going to stop in with another piece that we did feature on the DC stream this morning, but we wanted to show you guys her again. This was a brand new reveal from Sideshow. This is the Huntress premium format figure. This is a great addition to the Birds of Prey lineup. We did previously get to see Black Canary. I think she made her debut at our last New York con. But now we get to see Helena Bertinelli uh, in a moment of repose, kind of a cool, calm, and collected swagger, if you will. Yes. Because she is, uh, she and Batman, you know, often clash on their ideas of how to take down the Gotham City crime racket. But she particularly focuses on the mafia, has a bit of a vendetta against them. You guys can see that she's on a kind of a Gotham dock base with a really unique paint job. We see kind of the wear of the faux wood boards. I mean, this is all sculpt, uh, but you've got that really cool light that gives the sense of the green that rises up from the waters beneath. Yeah, and earlier when we took a look at this, I was actually standing on the other side. So it's interesting to get this <laughs> side of the perspective because, uh, you know, we were talking about some of the other items that are, you know, strewn about on the on the dock here. We've got the crowbar, we've got a, a broken bottle, mm -hmm. and I did miss the knife that's sitting back there. It's all the little details that I love seeing. Yeah, you know, I actually missed seeing the knife too because I was so preoccupied with her cape. But we with do, everything else. <laughs> you indeed have a knife on the dock back there. So you guys can see this is a scene in which she's already busted up a certain racket. She's maybe waiting for someone else to show up uh, and just really kind of uh, fun attitude. There's some great 
uh, weathering all around her gauntlets and boots as well. Just fun. And then she does have the, the fabric cape going on as well. So you can RSVP to be notified when she goes up for pre-order at side.show slash con huntress. If you have Black Canary on pre-order, of course, this is a must have as well to pair the birds of prey together in your collection. Now we're going to take a look at some PCS pieces. These are brand new reveals for their WWE collection. We've got Macho Man Randy Savage and we've got Hulk Hogan. I mean, I don't think these guys need any introduction, of course, uh, but this is a great addition to their WWE quarter scale lineup uh, with some iconic poses, costumes going on. Um, someone who maybe has seen more wrestling shows than me can identify which specific shows they are from. But PCS always knocks it out of the park with these pieces. They are fully sculpted, so all the different colors and textures you see, especially on the boots and on the kind of uh, bandanas at, on their heads, that is all sculpted. Uh, just really, really fun poses, and the likenesses are great. Now, in this collection, they've also previously released The Ultimate Warrior, Ric Flair, The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is currently pre-ordering on our website. The uh, Undertaker. Oh, and The Undertaker, that's right. I knew I was forgetting somebody. Uh, and, and that kind of imposter Undertaker uh, SummerSlam variant. Uh, so this is a, a two great additions. These will obviously be sold separately. Um, but you guys can see they've gotten the Macho Man Randy Savage script all around the bandana just constantly, even with those sunglasses. Uh, and I can, I, I mean, I'm not even going to try to recreate <laughs> their You need Joshy G for that. We need Joshy G for the <laughs> signature catchphrases. My voice is kind of going as we get later into the week. But you guys can supply it in your own head. I mean, those, the poses are just so uh, iconic and fun. And I just love the way that they capture all of the, the, the boots, the knee pads, the sculpted trunks. Uh, yeah. And that musculature, I mean, that's, of course, as much iconic as their kind of signature styles and portraits. Um, and then each of these pieces has their kind of uh, signature logo up front as well. Now, these are prototypes, um, so we got, you guys are getting to see a really early look at these. You can go to side.show slash con Hulk to RSVP for Hulk Hogan. Uh, love the mustache sculpt. <laughs> They've gotten into that as well. Yes. Uh, just the really nice flex he's got going on, and I don't know if we can uh, see the back of this. Yeah, it's kind of a hard angle to film at, mm -hmm. but uh, he's got that kind of, the kind of uh, holes in his shirt that you can see the back muscles going on yes. there. Looks like stretched out fabric, which is really fun. And so this is the red and yellow uh, Hulk Hogan. Just a lot of fun stuff going on for PCS for that WWE lineup. So if you are a fan, you guys will want to RSVP. Now, Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today for an encore of one of the fan favorites, most requested pieces of this week. Uh, we've got the Prince one-sixth scale statue by PCS. This is nothing short of iconic. Uh, just an incredible, incredible representation of Prince. You guys are also seeing, we've got that purple light coming up from mm -hmm. below. That is the pedestal source uh, podiums. And we've taken you through all those features countless times throughout the week, but I did want to remind you guys Today is the last day to score that 10% off discount at side.show slash pedestal source using the code SideshowCon2021. Uh, that is good until the show floor closes today at about 6 o'clock. Uh, so you guys, if you are interested in a piece like this. Uh, but let's take a look at prints. Yes, let's give it a little spin because there's so much detail. The coat, the pants, the boots, the bike, the hair. Yeah, the hair. That has been, I think, one of the fan favorite aspects of that with all of those beautiful curls just layered in so nicely. Now this is a fully sculpted piece as well. So all of that beautiful draping, all of that ruffle you are seeing on the blouse, that is all sculpted. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up specifically, but there's even like a pearlescent uh, detail to it. There's little flecks in it that really give it a shine. They've got that really nice paint application on the hands uh, to, to mimic the lace kind of riding gloves. Yeah. Uh, just a beautiful piece. And then that metallic purple of the coat also carries into the motorcycle, which is fully detailed. And we've even got that kind of asphalt mm -hmm. base. This is just such a nice piece. It's such a uniquely shaped piece as well. You know, a lot of characters have a, a circular base, but you guys will want to make sure if you do have uh, this in your collection that you, you gauge for the appropriate <laughs> shelf space. I mean, that is an important thing to consider the footprint uh, of the statue. But this is, I mean, this has made such a footprint on our hearts this week. That's such a weird, that wasn't <laughs> right. But you guys, this has made such a splash at the show. Yeah, I'll take that one back to the drawing board. I apologize. That was not great. But this, this was just such a, a fan favorite piece of the week. People were wanting uh, to see this again and again. So it will be up for pre-order very soon. You can check that out at side.show slash conprints. 
and truly he has been the prince of this convention. Yes. All right. <laughs> so that, that one got one singular groan <laughs> laugh from Autumn. Thank you. Uh, up next, we want to show you guys a couple of really unique pieces for Harry Potter collectors in your life. This is a trio of pieces by New Zealand Mint, which are the makers of fine collectibles of uh, precious metals. Now, up front, we've got the one ounce silver coin. Uh, this is a Lord Voldemort uh, silver coin. It's technically legal tender, uh, but Ooh. more than that, it is highly collectible. Each of these pieces comes with a uh, beautiful wooden display box. It comes with a certificate of authenticity as well, verifying the purity of the metal and uh, the fact that it is one of a limited edition of pieces. On the back, it does have uh, the, the Queen Victoria, like that's that's the legal tender part Ooh, is the back I love side that. Uh, verifies. But of course, you'll want to display the front side uh, with that really unique engraving of Lord Voldemort. I do love the wooden box as well in the display. Yes, it is It is just a very sleek display that allows the silver to shine because this is a precious metal one ounce silver collectible. And then we've got two unique coins that are square shaped. So yes, these are technically coins and again, legal tender, uh, but they are color recreations of Harry Potter movie posters. So we've got, I believe, Prisoner of Azkaban and we've got Order of the Phoenix here as well that use a unique combination of engraving and color design to really recreate those images and allow the silver aspects of the image to pop. These are also, I believe, one ounce silver coins. Uh, again, just make a highly collectible, really, really unique gift for the Harry Potter fan in your life. Um, you guys can check these out. I know the mods are dropping the links and showing the short links for all three of these pieces, but they are available on our website as well as a plethora of other New Zealand mint pieces. They've done a number of other coins, some of them shaped like characters uh, that are all legal tender, precious metal uh, with a, a they do gold ones and silver ones as well. So you can check that out on our website. Just a, a, a really unique uh, kind of I mean, to say, oh, I've got the, I've got the Lord got the, Voldemort right. coin. <laughs> and it's legal tender. And it's legal tender. This is what I like about, you know, as far as display goes for any movie fans or Potterheads out there. If you're mm -hmm. a little, you know, you need a safe space, uh, if you're like an apartment setting, this is the perfect way to go. Yes, absolutely. And just, yeah, they're really nice little statements and, and definitely conversation starters. Now we do have one last piece to show you guys. This is back to Premium Collectible Studio, PCS. We've got the Grimlock statue and this is the deluxe edition you guys are seeing him on a turntable okay i'm getting oh. word that he's on a turntable so what a guys, happy surprise you guys can take a look at that all the way around so the non-deluxe version simply stops at the uh, tyrannosaurus character so you guys can see that um but there are so many unique aspects to this check out that clear semi-translucent we've got the kind of conversion from the dinobot form to a bipedal uh form as well now, this is very different than PCS's uh, traditional Transformers offerings. You guys have seen those really cool um, kind of cell shaded style Generation 1 Transformers. And there, there was a previous Grimlock statue. This is larger than that piece. Uh, and so this is just a, a really kind of sleek, very much more metallic looking version of the Transformers. And so the deluxe edition does have that, that semi-translucent blue clear cast with the full uh, bought on top. Now this piece is just, it's so much fun because to capture in a static statue that kind of kinetic motion of the creature converting into this different form, you guys can see uh, in this the sculpts, I mean, if I can point out very quickly, so you can see the the leg of Grimlock here and see how that has become the arm up top. You've got those similar marks and dials on uh, on the construction. Just a really fun piece for Transformers fans. Yeah, I really, this is such an impressive scale, not just based on the size and the height of where we're seeing it, but mm -hmm. all the different paint, the different elements. And you say, you know, there's a lot of translucent elements here. I wonder if we can spin it just around just a little bit more just to show them the, the neck yeah. right here. Because that's something you don't really see if you're just looking at it, you know, from one angle. So the, the more you, the more angles you get to play at with this, the more you can yeah. see. And I really, really like how you said this sculpt really tells that entire story of the movement. Yeah, then of course we've got that detailed base with the kind of molten crag at the bottom, even more uh, kind of robot detritus down here you guys can see in the base. Uh, and you can see some of those uh, semi-translucent elements as well 
uh, in the chest of the character. And, and then one final detail that I really enjoy is that the kind of, there's kind of the wear and tear where the silver comes up between yes. uh, panels on the character. So you can see those elements as if this is a more distressed, uh, in-action version of a Transformer as opposed to those classic cel-shaded animated versions that we saw. Now you can check this out at side.show slash Grimlock, con Grimlock, excuse me, side.show slash con Grimlock to RSVP to be notified because this is a brand new prototype piece uh, and it will be pre-ordering very soon. Now that does it for our our final day, I was going to say seventh and final, seventh and final day at Sideshow Con. There has been so much this entire week. So again, if you missed any of it, you're going to want to check out our social media because we do have full galleries for everything. You want to go to side.show slash VR1, VR2, VR3, and then later this evening, check for VR4 so you can do a virtual walk around. Uh, one of the cool things is if you have an Oculus, you can actually, you know, Use that to, here, yes, to interact. There's more product information as well, um, web pages you can link directly to in those booth tours. But that doesn't mean we're done for the day. We still have a couple more things coming up for you guys. There's a giveaway challenge at 3 p.m. Pacific. And then at 4 o'clock, we've got another episode of Win, Lose, or Die, hosted by Andrew Seco with an original story about uh, Sideshow Con, and I believe this is the Con Cave Conspiracy. Uh, so you guys will get to watch that adventure play out and see who wins a prize. And then at 5 o'clock today, we have, of course, the wrap-up, but this is the wrap-up of all wrap-ups, so be adequately prepared. We've said that that feels like, it, the show itself feels like the distillation of stumbling out of the convention <laughs> afterwards. This is the stumbling out of the full con where the show floor closes. Um, so there's still so much going on, but that does it for our booth tours today. I want to thank you guys so much for hopefully joining us all week long. If there's anything you missed, though, you can catch it all on our YouTube. Thank you for joining me. Now, what was your favorite piece uh, of this? Amy, thank you so much for taking me personally through the tour and sharing your expertise on all the items, all the details. My pleasure. Oh, it's so hard to pick a favorite because I turn around and I want to be so greedy and I want all of them. <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to go with the prints. That, yes, that has been a consistent favorite. Oh. Oh, oh, oh no. Where's it going? Oh, no. What? What? <laughs> uh, I'll just, you can just put that in my trunk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alan. She's parked outside. Um, oh, gosh. And then for myself, I'd have to say, let me remind myself what we went through today. Goodness gracious. I know, so much. I really liked those Back to the Future pieces. I, I, I have such an affinity for the those films. I had to, uh, we did an event at the comic book store I worked at, and I learned you could watch all of them in an eight hour shift and start the first one again. So I've seen those movies a ton, but I love them every time. So seeing those pieces represented by Iron Studios today was so much fun. Uh, so I think that about does it for our show today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, stay tuned to our social media for all of that stuff because there's still more to go. Oh. oh, wait, no, that's supposed to go in my well, car. Hey, uh, my car, though, right? I'm sorry. Who let her into the studio? I thought, mm. okay, well, that's awkward. Well, we're going to go stop Autumn. Again, check out our socials for that giveaway challenge coming up, and we'll see you guys later at the wrap-up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't, don't forget, forget to, to let, let your geek, geek side show. show. Woo! Woo!